everyone. I'm hoping that all of you are doing well. Quarantine, social distancing. Well, I'm welcoming you to this new series called Epic Mammals of India. And we're not going to look at tigers and elephants all, and all these ferocious and big animals here. We are going to look at small mammals, lesser known animals um, across India. And India is super rich in biodiversity and some of these small mammals are absolutely stunning and amazing. Their role in ecosystem and biodiversity sometimes is bigger than bigger mammals. Well, uh, let's go to our first episode and the first mammal that we're going to look at is the Nilgiri Martin. You know, the name sounds weird. Some of you might have seen it maybe or some of you might have seen pictures. So what is a Martin? So Martin has a weasel head and it's got a very bushy tail and it's got retractable claws looks something like this with a yellow throat. There are different martens across the world, uh, roughly about seven of them. So if you go to the Americas, there you get something called the American Pine Martin and Europe has European Pine Martin. And Europe also has something called the Sable, which is a smaller one. And apart from that, Europe also has uh, the, the stunning looking Stone Martin, which is also Beach Martin which is present throughout Europe, all the way from Spain to uh, Asia and uh, almost the entirety of China. And then we have something called Japanese Martin and followed by we have the yellow throated Martin and then our very own Nilgiri Martin. India has uh, three Martins. One is the Stone Martin, which is in Trans Himalayas. And the Himalayas has the yellow throated Martin and then uh, the Western Guards. Western Guards has the Nilgiri Martin. Out of all these Martins, uh, you know, definitely Nilgiri Martin is the rarest one, less, least studied one, and uh, very little is known about this animal. It's, it's sort of a cryptic animal. Uh, but what is known is that uh, earlier it was believed that these animals prefer higher altitude, grassland, sholas. Later, the beliefs changed as more studies were done. It was that they prefer you know, riparian forests, then it came to deciduous forests. Um, but now, just about 10 days ago, one of my friends saw a Nilgiri Martin right outside his house uh, at 900 meters altitude. But if you go by studies, um, the lowest record is roughly about 600 meters. And there is also uh, something stated of a sighting at about 300 meters, but I'm not completely sure of that. Uh, I couldn't find the right papers, but, but quite possible. The range is somewhere about um, 300 meters and uh, to all the way up to uh, 2000 meters. But most of the sightings happen about 1000 meters, which clearly says that uh, these guys love the higher altitudes. Uh, and they are absolutely shy and, uh, and possibly a lot of people see Nilgris, Nilgri Martins and before even they could get a picture or reconfirm if it's a Nilgiri Martin or a giant squirrel, it's already gone. So most of the sightings are seconds or micro microseconds, just a you know, fleeting glimpse of the animal. Uh, that's quite one, uh, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why for hundreds of years, um, a lot of Nilgiri Martins were mistaken uh, by locals as a civil or uh, a giant squirrel. And uh, that's the reason why we don't have much of records. But what about the population? So uh, some of the estimates say that the population is roughly about 1000. Uh, but we don't have a concrete study to establish that the population is, should be clearly well over that. Uh, but if you go back 100 years, these animals were quite common in a lot of these high altitude areas um, in coffee plantations, and especially in Kodagu and Kurg. Uh, you know, I, I read something which said that there was a bounty set on these animals because they kept raiding, uh, you know, bee farms. So, um, which means they are they, they're not as rare as it was. Uh, it is today. Uh, it should have been quite a common animal. Uh, so much so that it was called a nuisance. So, looking at its distributions, there uh, all the way uh, throughout Western Ghats. They are there throughout southern Western Ghats, starting all the way from the tip of 
uh, India, which is Kanyakumari. Uh, that's Kanyakumari Wildlife Sanctuary. And going up, uh, the northern limit is said to be somewhere uh, below the Gaon. So most of the sightings are seconds or micro microseconds, just a you know, fleeting glimpse of the animal. Uh, that's quite one, uh, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why for hundreds of years, a um, lot of Nilgiri Martins were mistaken uh, by locals as a civet cat or uh, a giant squirrel. And uh, that's the reason why we don't have much of records. But what about the population? So uh, some of the estimates say that the population is roughly about 1,000. Uh, but we don't have a concrete study to establish that. The population is, should be clearly well over that. Uh, but if you go back 100 years, these animals were quite common in a lot of these high altitude areas um, in coffee plantations, uh, especially in Kodagu and Kurg. Uh, you know, I, I read something which said that there was a bounty set on these animals because they kept raiding uh, you know, bee farms. Uh, it should have been quite a common animal, uh, so much so that it was called a nuisance. So looking at its distribution, they are there throughout southern Western Gulf, starting all the way from the tip of uh, India, which is Kanyakumari. Uh, that's Kanyakumari Wildlife Sanctuary. And going up, uh, the northern limit is said to be somewhere uh, below Kudrimuk, because there were some extensive studies conducted on uh, Kudrimuk National Park, but uh, there were no records. And what does it eat? Is it is it carnivorous? There are records of them uh, raiding beehives and there are good records of them uh, you know, eating a lot of seeds and fruits which means they are helping dispersal of seeds. So this animal is a very very capable hunter and there are uh, several uh, records of them going after mouse deers, they are going after spotted deer fawn, uh, you know hunting them, taking it up the trees. And, but uh, very little is known about their social behavior. Uh, a lot of the sightings were um, solitary. The, the most common one is showing up in pairs, but then uh, later there are a lot of records of them in groups. In fact, there was a sighting in Periyar Tiger Reserve where uh, one of the dragonfly survey groups saw five of them in one tree. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it should have been a really, really stunning experience. And there were more of these uh, records. One of the long term studies that was done on Milgree Martins was done. In Pamar Shola National Park. So uh, this group of researchers from uh, Kerala Agricultural University, so they studied Nilgiri Martins for five years and they roughly had about 42 sightings. And can you imagine the longest sighting they had was about three minutes. Uh, that explains why people don't see Nilgiri Martins much. Uh, but look at the color and the coat. Um, it's, you know, it looks like it's something from out of the world. Uh, and the coat, in fact, is pale yellow in some cases and goes all the way to, um, you know, orangish yellow in some cases. So how do these animals move from place to place? They live in the trees, they uh, thrive there, they eat, hunt there, they, they mostly raid uh, nests for eggs as well. Uh, so well, so these animals are pretty much arboreal, these animals hardly uh, come to the ground. They do come to the ground once in a while either to hunt or uh, probably go from one patch of trees to the to a different patch of trees but otherwise they are traversing the forest uh, completely uh, you know through branches pretty much like what a squirrel giant squirrel does you know goes to the edge and it, it can jump it jumps otherwise it just manages by traversing across branches um, so what is threatening Nilgiri Martin survival uh, why has the population gone down no points for guessing habitat degradation. Uh, just look at Western Ghats. Western Ghats is one place where you will see huge difference. The, the, the towns or the places, a lot of these mountains are completely different if you go after five years or after 10 years. You know, the forests are becoming less and less um, continuous. Large projects like dams, industries, they're separating forests where these animals cannot move from place to place. So one of the main challenges, the forest is completely discontinuous now with uh, these dams and large pro uh, projects and these animals' habitat is limited now because
because they they don't they are very very shy animal that they cannot expose themselves to uh, you know open ground if you have to see nilgiri martens where can you see nilgiri martens um, more than the location i can assure you that you know you probably you will come up across this animal when you least expect it because it's not an animal that like a tiger or a leopard that you can identify a particular spot and then go look for it wait in the spot uh, that sort of thing doesn't happen much though there are few hot spots known in the western ghats uh, you know some of the areas where possibly you can better chance of seeing this animal are kalakara mudathurai kmtr majolai to be specific uh, and if you come up uh, munar munar is possibly the the closest shot you might have at seeing this animal Uh, Pambadum Shola National Park has brilliant walks, and this is one of the stunning, um, you know, places to have a, you know, really intimate experience with the Western Ghats. Uh, mind the leeches, but uh, you you might get to see Nilgiri Martens there. Uh, the next hot spot is Nilgiri. There are several spots which are known to be uh, Nilgiri Martens areas. Probably if you can get a local guide in uh, Nilgiri or drive around the place, keep an eye on the trees. you might get to see some uh, especially uh, kothigri uh, or or any of the high altitude areas within nilgiri uh, but well uh, this is a cryptic animal sighting always happens when you don't carry a camera it always happens when you are least prepared or it it just happens when uh, you know there is a bus or a lorry ready to honk and chase away the animal that's the way it rolls but well um i really encourage all of you to travel to some of these spots um, you know if you're not looking for nilgiri martens you can of course uh, look at the habitats and enjoy uh, nature right after lockdown because you know uh tourism is also very essential for conservation right um these animals are really stunning and there are several more animals which are uh, equally Stunning, and we will see more of these animals in the coming episodes. Did you know that a group of Nilgiri marten is called Richness? Yeah, what a suitable collective name. Yeah, I'm sure they represent the richness of this world and all of India. We are going to look at more of these animals. Please stay tuned. Keep watching the channel. Thank you.